Hey guys, Nintendo here. If you know me, you know that I love unique controllers. And one type of controller that's remained persistent throughout the decades is arcade sticks or fight sticks. Since the early days of home consoles, companies have been trying to recreate the feeling of the arcade from the comfort of your couch. And whenever I see one of these controllers for a good deal, I like to add it to my collection. So today, I'm gonna take you through my set of arcade sticks all the way from the NES through to modern day. So let's get started. All right, first up, I've got this guy, the NES Advantage. This is probably the most recognizable controller in this video because they were pretty popular back in the 80s, and today you can find them for cheap at plenty of local game stores. I like to pick these up if I ever see them for a good price, around $5 or so, uh, to the point that it seems like they're multiplying and I keep finding them around my house. It's actually uh, becoming a bit of a problem. As far as the controller itself, uh, the build quality is alright, but the buttons and the joystick are pretty mushy because they're using rubber switches as opposed to mechanical switches like you would find on an actual arcade machine. But that's not unique to the NES Advantage, That's uh, a lot of controllers do that. It's kind of a compromise between quality and cost. This controller does also have a turbo option for both the A and B buttons, as well as a speed dial for each. And another common feature that this one has is the slow button over here on the side. If you're unfamiliar with that, basically what that does is it just constantly pauses and unpauses the game in order to make it run at a pseudo half speed. However, the Advantage does have one feature that's pretty unique, which is that it's got two connectors at the end so that you can plug this in for two player games like Super Mario Brothers, where you would typically have to plug in two separate controllers. You can actually just use one NES Advantage and pass it back and forth. Not really a groundbreaking feature, but a nice touch. Next up, I've got the Sega Genesis Arcade Power Stick. One of my favorite things about arcade sticks, and one of the reasons I think they're so cool and fun to collect, are their distinct designs. And here's another great example. This fight stick is very distinctly Genesis. Even with the turbo feature, Sega opted to call this mode Mega Fire, which has got to be a reference to its overseas counterpart, the Sega Mega Drive. Much like the NES Advantage, this one also has kind of a mushy stick and less than perfect buttons, but it's great fun to kick back with for a game of Mortal Kombat or Streets of Rage. On the plus side, it does have this nice ergonomic handrest on the left side, and a sturdy metal base, which gives it a bit of weight. All right, after that, I've got the successor to the NES Advantage, the Super Advantage. Much like the first, this one keeps the aesthetic of its console, even down to these two purple decorative sliders, just like a North American Super Nintendo. Although, oddly enough, it's also taken some design inspiration from the Super Famicom with its red, blue, yellow, and green face buttons. But instead of two turbo dials at the top, this one's got six separate turbo sliders for each button, as well as a new auto mode, which will automatically fire the button for you. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot to say about this one, but again, you've got to love that design. Now, while many of these arcade sticks are first-party licensed accessories, I do have a few to showcase which were made by other companies, like this guy, the Fighter Power Stick by Capcom. There were two versions of this one, uh, one for the Super Nintendo and one for the Genesis. And this one is for the Super Nintendo, although it was also sold with an alternate cable, which gave it backwards compatibility with the original NES. As you might have guessed, this one was released in conjunction with Street Fighter II. Compared to the last few controllers, the Capcom pad has a much more responsive joystick, much closer to the professional equipment found on real arcade cabinets. And it's also got this unique split design. It almost reminds me of some of those uh, ergonomic keyboards from the 90s. All right, next up is the ASCII stick for PlayStation. Again, I absolutely love this design. It looks just like the original PS1. This was a licensed arcade stick made by ASCIiWare, the same manufacturer that produced the Super Advantage in cooperation with Nintendo. And it definitely shows. It has the exact same mode toggle sliders as well as that slow mode feature. But in this case, they've also made room for additional L2 and R2 buttons. The biggest upgrade by far are the improved joystick and buttons themselves. They really feel much closer to arcade quality parts on the PS1 stick than on the Super Advantage. And the whole thing just has a little bit more heft to it. It's got this solid metal back, and overall it's just got great build quality. So kudos to ASCIiWare for improving their product. Okay, next up is one of my favorites. This is the Arcade Shark for N64. You might remember this from my video on weird third-party Nintendo 64 controllers. And appropriately enough, this is one of those unlicensed third-party gamepads. This one was made by Interact. 
For the most part, the Arcade Shark is just your average fight stick. The buttons aren't great, but as for the joystick, this one has kind of a unique glide to it. And that's because instead of replacing the D-pad, it's replacing an analog stick, which is taking in that kind of fluid input. However, the coolest feature of this one is that if you happen to be playing one of the two titles on N64 which rely on the D-pad, you can unscrew the joystick and attach it to the other directional wheel on the left side for that more traditional digital input. Okay, nearing the end of our list here, I've got the PL631 arcade stick for PlayStation 2, produced by Pelican. You may remember Pelican as a budget accessory company, and unfortunately, this one does not match the quality of the PlayStation 1 stick we covered earlier. The buttons are mushy, overall the build is light and cheap, and just listen to this joystick. <laughs> Not good. On the bright side, it does have a program feature where you can assign a multi-key macro. But I picked this one up because I didn't already have a PS2 arcade stick, and the design definitely caught my eye. It's got this weird kind of split setup, sort of like the Capcom Fighter Power Stick, but with an even more strange shape, and these blue hand rests next to the controls. Otherwise, it's kind of unremarkable, but I didn't already have a PS2 stick, so I figured I might as well pick this one up. Now, the PS2 certainly isn't the most recent of consoles, but there was a bit of a dry spell for arcade sticks for a while there as arcades were phased out in the US, but they've started to make a comeback. Case in point, here is the NES30 arcade joystick by 8-Bit Doe. I really like this one. The design is clearly a throwback to the NES, uh, but this joystick works with both PC and the Nintendo Switch. And unlike the other fight sticks we've covered so far, this one is wireless. If you remember, uh, I used two of these in my giant Nintendo Switch arcade dock, and they were a big part of what made that project possible. And talk about a hefty build. This one has a solid metal back, and the whole thing has got a good weight to it. It's got real quality parts, uh, more so than any of the sticks we covered so far. This one feels very close to authentic arcade quality switches. And you can't beat that convenience of a Bluetooth connection. And finally, to top off our list, I have what may be one of the most unique game controllers on the market today, the Mixbox. The version I have here is for use with PC and PS4, but there's also a universal edition which will work with all current gen consoles. This controller is decisively marketed for those of us who love arcade sticks, but are used to the precision and quick response time of PC gaming. Instead of a traditional joystick, the Mixbox has these mechanical WASD keys with Cherry MX mechanical switches. And what this means is that there is no travel time. In other words, there's no period of wait between left and right inputs, which is perfect for those of us MLG Pro gamers who need to execute perfect meteor smashes come November. <laughs> this thing is no joke. It has a full metal body and is definitely the most sturdy of controllers that we've covered today. And this is the only controller to feature genuine Sanwa Denshi buttons, just like an actual arcade machine. This is the real deal. All in all, the Mixbox is just a great piece of tech, and it makes me happy to see third-party manufacturers bringing the humble fight stick back to its roots, and innovating for modern games. Okay guys, that's about it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this look at my collection of arcade sticks for home consoles. Do you have any of your own favorite arcade sticks that I might have missed in this video? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks for watching this new video on my collection of arcade sticks for home consoles. Hope you enjoyed. If you like what I'm doing and would like to help out the channel, make sure to check out that join button below the video. You'll be able to get early access to my uploads as well as some other cool rewards if that's your sort of thing. Otherwise, I hope you'll look forward to the next video. Take care!